Good morning, King's Church, Frodsham. And good morning if you are joining us online, whether you are here live or catching up, you are very welcome. I encourage you to comment, um, interact with us. We are all here to encounter Jesus together. If you are uh, unfamiliar with the building, to my right is the fire escape, or you can go through the foyer. Um, there are another couple of doors out um, if this one is blocked. Don't worry about the children. Uh, they are taken care of. Uh, they are very welcome here with their noise and their mess. King's Church is all about family. Um, a few notices. This afternoon, 3 o'clock, is Cameo, our Come and Meet Everyone service. It's a shorter service and a cream tea, so absolutely everyone is welcome. That's 3 o'clock here. Then, next week is a big week for King's Church because... It is the official launch of King's Church Nutsford. So we are joined by the... There we go, plan B. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. So when the batteries go in the handheld, it creates all sorts of chaos. Uh, so as I was saying, next week, big week for King's Church. We are launching King's Church Nutsford. The Free Methodist UK leader, John Townley, is joining us. So John will be preaching here, King's Church Frodsham, 10.30 next Sunday. And then he will be officially launching King's Church Nutsford at half past five next week. So I encourage you all, if you can make it to Nutsford, it'll be fantastic to uh, go and support them and join them during their official launch. So that's next week. Then towards the end of September, Saturday 23rd of September, we have a Macmillan coffee morning to raise money for Macmillan Charity. So if you want to find out more details, please speak to Alwyn. It's in the afternoon on Saturday. Uh, then Sunday the 24th of September is Heartbeat in the evening. So if you want more information about our Heartbeat service, please speak to Bill. I think that's it. So I will open in prayer and then we will worship. We have Rainy bringing us the word this morning. Pastor Scott is here still though. Uh, but it's rainy bringing us God's word. So I will pray and we will worship. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you know exactly uh, every single one of us uh, better than we know ourselves. And I praise you that you know our needs and that you can meet us exactly where we are. I thank you, Lord, that we are privileged to be able to meet here and I pray for open hearts this morning. We are here to meet with you. I praise you, Father. Amen. Thanks, Michelle. Um, it's so exciting to, uh, to get to lead, you in, lead us in worship. Um, I've been uh, challenged over the last few months um, with this whole idea of uh, that there are kids' worship songs and there are worship songs. There is no such thing as a kids' worship song because it is a worship song. Uh, there's a fantastic, um, I'm not sponsoring of anyone or, or, in, or endorsing anyone, but there's a fantastic new album called Come City of Light, which has got the song, My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. And it's magnificent because there are children, there are adults worshipping with that song, a song that often people get really annoyed at because, oh, it's a kid's song. No, 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 it's a worship song. So we're going to worship. We're going to worship with songs that you might think, oh, I don't like this song. Oh, I don't know this song. It doesn't matter. You're here to worship. 
If you don't know the songs, read the words. Find a way to worship God, whether that is just reading the words, saying them in your heart, whether to joining in with the clapping or with whatever. Um, I encourage you to come and worship our amazing God. He is worthy, even if we're uncomfortable. He is worthy with what we're going to bring him. So let's stand and let's worship our amazing God.
Take us to the song which often is called the hit song. My God is so big, but it is so true. That he is so strong and so mighty. There is nothing he cannot do. The mountains are his. And the rivers are his. And the stars are his handiwork too. We're going to sing this and worship with it. We all know it. It's a magnificent song. But this is a song to worship to. big, you are strong, you are creator of all. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Before we move on to the prayer, we have a very special lady in our midst this morning. Um, Audrey turned 90 yesterday. So will you all join me in a very special happy birthday to Audrey. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Audrey. Happy birthday to you. Hey. Congratulations, Audrey. Um, who is leading prayers this morning, please? Thanks, Sue. So, Lord, as we come into your presence this morning, we want to give you thanks that for your everlasting love, that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness to us. Father, we want to thank you that you are the same God, yesterday, today, and forever. And, Lord, nothing is too hard for you. Lord, we want to pray for our church. We, we thank you, Lord, that you have brought us into being. We thank you, too, for Knutsford Church, which is officially launching next week. And, Father, we pray that in all things we will always keep you central, that you will always be in the middle of all that we do. That, Lord, that we will look for what you're doing and want to join in. 
Father, as we look at our world, there is so much which is wrong. And Lord, we, we know that all creation groans. And we groan alongside, Lord, and that is our cue to pray. Lord, there's so many areas of the world where there is things which are not right. And in some places there is pure evil. Lord, there are, there are earthquakes, there are floods, there's famine, there's war, there's disease. There's greed, there's dictatorship, there's war. Lord, so many big things. And yet, Lord, I want to thank you that you know the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. Lord, we do pray that you'll bring healing to our, our world. And Father, I just want to bring perhaps two to you this morning. Lord, we pray for those who have been caught in the earthquake. Father, such devastation. We pray for those who are grieving loss, loss of loved ones and for those who are still caught. Father, we do pray that you will give rescue services a special knowledge as to where to find people. Lord, that you'll keep people safe and you will allow them to be found. Father, we want to pray for, for the war as well in Ukraine, Father. It's been going on for so long. Father, I want to pray for an end to war. Lord, we know that you can do anything. You can even change the heart and mind of a ruthless dictator. So, Father, we do pray that you will do that. But Lord, that you will prevent him from doing any more harm. And, Father, we pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones in the war, through fighting or through casualty. Bring peace, Lord. And, Father, we want to pray for our government as well. For both, for both Houses of Parliament and for all MPs across all political parties. Lord, we pray for servant hearts, for a, willing, for a willingness to be transparent, to be authentic, and to put aside, servant, uh, put aside human greed and selfish ambition. Lord, I want to pray especially for Christians in Parliament. Father, you've placed them for where they are, <coughs> placed them where they are for such a time as this. Father, we pray that you will keep them strong, that you will keep them faithful, and that, Lord, that they will be salt and light where they are. We thank you for them, Lord. And Father, we want to give you thanks that you are more willing to listen than we are even to speak. That you hear all our prayers and that you will act according to your great love and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to continue in prayer through this um, next song. It's a song that's only been around for about six months. And um, I'm sure for many of us it will be a new song, and that's actually fine. I mean, we all have to listen to a song for the first time. And I remember listening to this and having to restart it with the lyrics in front of me and having to read it and realizing this is a prayer, a prayer of thanks, a prayer of petition, a prayer of praise to our amazing Father, our amazing Savior. So um, it's called Jesus is Lord. And um, I encourage you to stand um, and to, if you don't know it, to read it and to pray it with us. But this is a prayer for our nation, a prayer for our communities, and a prayer for this church.
Let's stand. situation, over every opinion, you are above them all. You are Lord. You are the truth. Bless Rainy Lord as she comes and speaks to us. 
and let your will be done in this place. Strip away any selfish pride or any sense of um, pride in our own achievements that we may have so that we are able to listen to what you want to tell us this morning. For your glory. Amen. Privilege to have ooh, um, my mum, the eldest member, and my new grandson, the youngest member of the church here today. And that little bundle of joy there, uh, Jackson Terence Field, is an answer to our prayers that we pray for that baby. So I'm sure Vicky and Josh would like to thank you all for your encouragement, your prayers and your gifts. Um, but take a look, he's beautiful. So, I wonder what you think of when someone talks about partnership. One of the definitions of partnership is an arrangement between two or more people who oversee business operations and share its profits, profits and liabilities. Many of us have heard of the company Rolls-Royce. Henry Royce built his first motor car in 1904, and in May that year met Charles Rolls, whose company sold quality cars in London. An agreement and partnership was reached that Royce Limited would manufacture a range of cars to be exclusively sold by C.S. Rolls and Company, and they were to bear the name Rolls-Royce. And that company still exists today. In the Bible, we see the partnership of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at work in creation. And in Genesis 1.26, it says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. That was the arrangement. The Godhead made the first man and woman. They were, cre they were created so that they could produce on their own. They were created to walk and talk with God. They were given a beautiful garden, and they were created to live forever. This, in business terms, is the arrangement and profit. But as we know, the partnership was broken, when Eve disobeyed God. And here's the liability and the loss. We're told about the partnership with Simon Peter in Luke 5, verse 10. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. I think it's amazing how God took this earthly partnership and turned it into an eternal partnership for his kingdom. A fact that all of us, whether owning our own business, in partnership, employed or retired, God can take us in this environment and use it for his glory. So remember that tomorrow. Well, getting back to partnerships. Today, 20% of partnerships in business fail in the first year and 50% in the first five years. Many companies limit their liability so that the impact and risk is reduced substantially and the impact on their customers can be great. I'm sure many of us have fallen foul of a company that you were buying something from or a company that was doing work on your home who has suddenly closed down, leaving you with a mess to clear up and sometimes at an additional cost and very often with no comeback. Maybe when you think of partnership, you think of marriage. Statistics tells us that around 47% of couples get married. The trend over the last 50 years has changed so that couples live together some, and some of these get married. However, unfortunately, the divorce rate is around 42%. Genesis 2, 24 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And Jesus says in Matthew 19, verses 4 to 6, Haven't you read, he replied, 
that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. The act of marriage is no longer fashionable. It is no longer encouraged, and the church has watered down what marriage is about. The biblical definition of marriage is a man and a woman, and no other type of relationship is a marriage. But this partnership of marriage is dissolved on the death of one of the parties. What is it about mankind that they think they know better than God? We now live in a, a world where there is no accountability to God, where whatever you want to do is acceptable and a religion can be formed around it to justify the actions. But there are consequences. I want us to look at the greatest partnership there is. That is the partnership we can have with Christ. We don't have to buy shares in this partnership and it's free to anybody who wants it. It is a life changing and it offers eternal life. With this partnership, the Holy Spirit of God lives in us, not possible with any other relationship. Is there a cost in this partnership? Well, yes. On Christ's side, there was a tremendous cost. But before he could pay that price, a very young girl called Mary and a man named Joseph put their trust in God. When Mary was told she was going to give birth to the Son of God, and Joseph told by an angel that he would bring this child up in faith, they both agreed. Even though they were ridiculed and became outcasts, they prayed, paid the price so that the Son of God could come into this world as a baby. Now Jesus had already walked on this earth at the beginning of creation. It was now an entirely different place. Yes, the sun still shone in the day and the moon at night, the trees bore fruit, but it was no longer the place God had created or even wanted. Man was evil. God had pressed restart once before and flooded the world and, and started it again with Noah. But he had promised not to do that again. So he needed a permanent solution and that solution was to die for us. Yes, he willingly suffered for you and for me. I think it's absolutely amazing that Jesus prayed for you and me in John 17. He says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one. That's us. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that may be, may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. So that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those who have given, you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Jesus prayed that prayer for you and for me. Let's just for a minute focus on the suffering that leads to this eternal partnership that Jesus wants for everybody. He was born in a stable. He was adopted by Joseph and he learned how to be a carpenter. His drive to learn the, the scriptures was immense, as was his Bible knowledge and his ability to teach. He was gifted and performed many miracles. But from the day he was born, people wanted to destroy and kill him. They thought they had succeeded when they found him guilty of blasphemy. So the price he paid was to be mocked, 
beaten, spat on, a crown of thorns embedded in his head, 39 lashes of a whip, and 39 lashes of a whip with hooks on. Skin ripped from his body, immense blood loss, nails driven through his hand and feet, dislocated joints, ripped muscles and ligaments, and a spear thrust in his side, and ultimately giving up his life. I don't believe that was the worst thing he went through. I think when he shouted out to God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He knew the fear and pain of not seeing God and being separated from him. Why? Because he took our sins on himself and he paid the price. A lot to give for an opportunity for a partnership with me and you. This was his part of the agreement. And the outcome was the victory Christ had when he was raised from the dead three days later. That victory means that we accept Christ as our Lord and Saviour. It means that he's defeated death and we can pass from death into eternal life. And our part is an act of repentance, being sorry for the wrong we've done and turning away from it. It's a short prayer that has an eternal benefit. We have a choice to accept Christ as our Lord and Saviour and follow his commands or reject him. There's no in-between state, no halfway house, no other option. This partnership is made for eternity. The prayer Jesus made is answered, but there are still thousands and thousands of people who need to be reached and make that prayer before God decides to shut the doors of heaven. Christ wants us all to be one. Well, how do we do that? We need to realise, as Jesus says in John 15, 5, apart from me, you can do nothing. But we have hope in Ephesians 3, 12. Because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now boldly and confidently come into God's presence. So we are really paralysed without Christ and we need one another. The early Christians continuous, continuously devoted themselves to fellowship. Acts 2 verse 42 tells us that. And the word for fellowship is koinonia. I don't know whether I've said that right, but it's spelled K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A, which means to have in common or to share. As those who are united with Christ, we are to share the life of Christ with one another in a way that results in individual and corporate spiritual growth. That's why God made fellowship so important. He wanted us to come together so that we always know we're not alone. Fellowship allows us to build those lasting relationships so we're never by ourselves in this world. Praying together and meeting together, 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. By praying together for common needs, struggles and times of celebrations, we are able to encourage the other believers in our lives and motivate one another onto love and good deeds. What is that impact of praying together? In addition to strengthening each individual's connection with God, prayer has the side effect of deepening interpersonal relationships. It encourages family members to become more sensitive to one another's feelings. Prayer is all about intimacy with the Lord and with one another. And the results are very often miracles, and we've got one over there in the corner. The Bible commands us to pray for one another. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And God manifests himself in many ways when praying together and for each other. I don't know about you, but I love coming here, worshipping and sharing. And sometimes we need to reflect on how fortunate we are to be part of Kings. Let's just look at what we've got and praise God for it. We have a wonderful worship group. 
to lead us into the very throne room of God where we can sing our praises to him. We have a team who do all the social media and sound and lights and videos, which enables people to join into our services when they can't be with us in person. They market the church, and more importantly, they share the gospel by all sorts of ways. We have children's work that also impacts parents through the tiddler's work. Our children, and they are ours, are being taught the very foundations of scripture that Jesus teaches. We have seen young lives like in Drew and Mary Ann being committed to Jesus through the teachings of Sunday school and the input of Christian parents. We have a prayer team that meets every Thursday to pray for revival and again on a Sunday to pray for the service and work of the church and then at the end of church to support and pray for anyone that comes forward. We have a prayer chain that communicates requests for prayers and we have seen some tremendous answers but they would love us to join them. We have a hospitality team that feeds us and creates a family atmosphere. We have a welcome team that greets us on a Sunday morning with a smile and a hug. We have a men's breakfast organiser where guest speakers share about Jesus and where you can invite someone to go with you to hear these fantastic stories and be challenged by them. We have a team that gives more mature people the opportunity to come together reach out to others and enjoy the teaching and don't forget the green tea. We have a finance team that looks after the finances of the church together with the official bits of the charity. They plan the budgets and ensure we are being good stewards of the money we receive. We have a number of preachers all spending time praying and listening to God, reading and studying to bring God's word to us. We have stewards that organise the practicality of the services. We have a team of people who maintain the building and fix things, or make sure it's fixed. We support Medcare and math charities. We have individuals that cut the grass. We have an administrator who deals with all the paperwork. And we have a pastor and leadership team who want to see lives won for Christ. And this church full of people praising God, where miracles happen on a daily basis where the community can come and experience God, where we can reach out into the surrounding areas and plant churches like Nuxford that will grow the kingdom of God. And of course, we have our Sunday morning service every week and a monthly evening heartbeat service where we can come together in fellowship and worship the Lord. Apologies if I've left anything out. These are all part of the partnership in this church to help people encounter Jesus. But we do have limited resource. Maybe there's something God is calling you to get involved with. Partnership at King's is more than attending. It's about being part of the work here, getting involved and having a say and an input into the future of this church. We are warned, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? But we must remember the Great Commission. We have to reach into the darkness to bring God's light, which is the other part of our partnership agreement that we have with Christ. For the good news is, Christ equips us for our part. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20 says, Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey, to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So our part of this partnership is to reach out to each other but also reach out into the world to share our faith with those that do not quite know Christ. In a nutshell, we're in the world, but we're, not, we're no longer of the world. We're so fortunate to belong to a free Methodist church where the word of God is taught. It's not watered down. It's not changed to suit a world that rejects the teaching of Christ. 
Look around at the talented people we have here. Lots of different experiences. As a church, we want to see people saved for Christ. We want to see the kingdom expand. We want to see a united prayer-driven church that sees miracles, hears from God, and sees Satan defeated in Frodsham, Helsby, all the surrounding areas, and now Nutsford and South Wirral. Sometimes we can be part of something, but not fully understand what we are part of. We're fortunate to have many partners in our church. Perhaps you're unsure of what the Free Methodist Church believes in. Perhaps you want to get more involved and become a partner yourself. Perhaps you're just considering asking Christ into your life. Whatever it is, please speak to Scott or myself or someone else here and let us share with you the joy of being a Christian and the privilege of being part of this church. While many people today consider it to be of little importance, fellowship in the body of Christ is certainly no size issue. In Acts 2, verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. When we are together, we know that Christ is here. So let's not waste that time. Let's build on it, praying, battling, and reaching out to those that are lost. Remember, we can be the link for them into eternal life in Christ. Matthew 18, verse 20 says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Let's all just pray. Father, we thank you for the ultimate gift of love and the sacrifice of your son. And I pray today, Father, that for those of us that know you, we would step further in to you. For those of you, us that don't know you, Lord, I pray that today would be a day where that eternal partnership comes into effect. And Lord, I pray for those that are thinking of getting involved in the church, in this church, in King's, um, in a more uh, 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 solid way, in a more detailed way, Lord, that, that today is the day that um, that calling happens in their hearts and they step forward. We praise you for this place, Lord. We praise you for the lives that put this church into being. But, Lord, it's now in our hands. And, Father God, we pray that you'll give us wisdom. You will give us, Lord, the gifting and, Father God, the opportunities to reach out into our communities. And we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Respond to what Rainy has said. Lord, help us to focus in on, even if it's just one of the things that Rainy has said to us, Help us, Lord, to use this time to maybe worship you through singing, through raising our hands in adoration of you. Help us, Lord, maybe to use this time to sit, to be still, to be sung over, to determine what it is your will is for us. Lord, maybe you wanted to use this time to just sit and dwell in your presence. Maybe, Lord, some of us need to just sit and work out what on earth is going on. What's this weird, strange feeling that I have in the pit of my stomach, in my, in my heart? What is this strange feeling? Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help us to determine what it is you want us to do in this time now. Lord God, help us to know that there is no wrong answer, that there is no wrong way of responding to you. This is a place which is filled with your spirit. Holy Spirit, fill this place and help us to respond to you now by calling you holy, knowing that you are here with us and that you are holy forever, that you are worthy of our time, our praise, our adoration and our resources. Help us, Lord, to focus in on what you want us to do now. Strip away our pride. Strip away our self-consciousness. 
Help us to focus in on your will now.
Lord Jesus, speak to us now. Lord Jesus, speak to us now. We are your servants, we are listening. Speak to us, Lord. What do you will us to do? us to listen to your word, to know your will for us, to be with you forevermore. Help us, Lord, not to leave this place without 
leave this place without any unfinished business with you. Help us to have the courage to come and ask for prayer. Help us to have the courage to be willing to stay and just stay in this time of where your spirit is in this place. Don't let us leave with unfinished business, with a sense of incompleteness. We're going to say the blessing um, and then we're going to carry on worshipping. If you want to stay, it would be marvellous um, to stay in this place of worship. If you want prayer, come on down. If you want to stay and dwell, stay and dwell. If you want to stay and worship, we're going to carry on worshipping. Let's say the blessing as, um, as we finish so that we can carry on with being community. blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen. Don't leave this place without finishing what you started there. Give you control to love me from the end.